Hi guys. It is what I hope to be the last chilly winter night here. Deep here in the suicide cave. Here deep in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Uh, on Valentine's night, February 14th. Uh, it is a Monday night, February 14th, 2022. A real doomsday lonely heart sitting here alone in the Point Lonesome Swamp on Valentine's night talking to his imaginary friends or the few of them who are left here uh, in the tribe. Since I have nothing else to do sitting here with my little Valentine, Sancho Panza. And so since it is Monday, guys, <coughs> here we go again. Uh, was it just two weeks ago tonight I was doing my... Uh, my famous performance art uh, <laughs> ran against my good friend Vegematic, uh, <laughs> stirring up shit here in the Doomosphere, trying to make a point about uh, how this absolutely pointless debate destroying friendships and everything else. We'll get back to that in a in a while. So this is just going to be kind of a rambling uh, Corona Panic Roundup. Uh, but I want to start before we get into the, uh, the hopefully the final mop-up of the Vegematic debate uh, and what I would like to say, but I probably will not be the, the uh, the last comment that I need to make on the Freedom Convoy up there in Canada, the single biggest distraction on planet Earth, the, the distraction to the distraction to the distraction to the distraction. Uh, I wanna, <laughs> I just love this. This was an email I received from my um, my buddy Kevin Shanholzer, who took a trip to Washington, D.C. with his daughter last week, brought this long report, uh, but my favorite uh, of his many observations, I guess he was, was he walking around the train station? I think he was in the big train station in Washington, D.C., where he uh, saw a digital ad showing a picture of a very obese woman wearing a mask with the slogan, free yourself, wear a mask. <laughs> a very obese woman wearing a mask, free yourself, wear a mask. How about free yourself and lay off the... Uh, free Krispy Kreme donuts. But anyway, so what do I want to, let's just jump in. Uh, you know, I was determined just to pick one story off the mainstream media today off the mainstream media to see the latest uh, mainstream media version of the uh, Freedom Convoy from good old Business Insider. <clears throat> Trudeau declares national emergency over Canadian trucker protest allowing government to override civil rights. It is right there. I can't speak for Vegematic or uh, Keith Hayes or anyone, but I'm assuming that my buddy Vegematic is cheering on uh, Justin Trudeau allowing his government to override his civil rights. Anyway, all right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, I guess this was, yeah, today, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau declared a national emergency over ongoing trucker protests, allowing the nation's government to temporarily, temporarily 
override civil rights, kind of like, you know, in 19, when was it, 1913, they made that temporary income tax. Uh, let's see, quoting the little uh, pretty boy Trudeau, the little pretty boy Nazi, uh, Justin Trudeau, the scope of these measures will be time-limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate to the threats they are meant to address. Yes, the Far-Reaching Emergencies Act gives the Canadian government the ability to prohibit, public is to prohibit public assembly, restrict travel, and force businesses to act with compensation. Trudeau said Canada's 1998 Emergency Act, so this was brought into law 24 years ago, will be used to, quote, strengthen and support law enforcement agency at all levels across the country, close quote. Um, Alan Solomon, chief legal analyst for Esquire Digital in Montreal, <coughs> told Insider, this is the first time the Emergency Act has been used since it was created 24 years ago. Yep, yep, yep. Um, anyway, uh, I, you, you can go on the mainstream media and find this, uh, this story and, and others like it uh, all over the mainstream media today. On Saturday, police began clearing out protesters that had been blocking a bridge on the U.S.-Canada border for the previous few days. Trudeau's use of the Emergency Act, quote, essentially gives the government a lot more power that you just can't get away with in a democracy like Canada, Solomon said. Quote, the federal government now has powers to do things such as cancel insurance for any of these trucks if they don't go home, cancel their license plates and registration, freeze their corporate accounts as well. Yep, yep, yep. And GoFundMe's uh, you know, to raise money for the truckers can be seized, crypto accounts uh, supporting the truckers can be frozen now by the Canadian government, as I assume Vegematic is applauding this. Uh, Solomon said this measure can either help or harm Trudeau and his party. Uh, on one hand, um, he said the Ottawa police, uh, as well as the federal government, have been criticized, you know, by people such as my friend Vegematic, uh, for not doing enough to curb the dem demonstrations. Um, so you got that on one hand. However, it could also give the image that Canada is a, quote, police state, or fuel criticism and more protest that this government overreach. That's not a grammatically correct statement, but that this government is in overreach or, you know, they left out the verb. Quote, <clears throat> It is true that some of these big rigs that might be worth millions of dollars are going to go home because they don't want to lose their truck, but that does not mean that more people will not join the protest. 
Solomon said. And so I'm going to leave it to you whether or not you believe uh, that this is government overreach by declaring a national emergency over uh, these protests, allowing the federal government to override Canadian citizens' civil rights. I personally agree this is government overreach, okay? But I am not suffering from uh, freedom convoy uh, derangement syndrome, which uh, obviously, I guess Vegematic, uh, three weeks in a row now. The man only does one fucking video a week. So three, uh, three out of three of his videos, and, 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 to, be, and, and to be fair, uh, you, you know, my friend Deb Ozarko uh, up there in Canada, uh, you know, on the other side of the fence, uh, you know, my other lefty friend Deb Ozarko uh, uh, up there on the other side of the fence of, of Vegematic is also suffering from Freedom Convoy derangement syndrome that uh, both of my little lefty friends up there, the two people, I mean, they're both my little imaginary friends. I've never met uh, it, it, either one of them uh, on completely opposite sides of the fence, both completely uh, deranged by this. It breaks my heart to see both of these people uh, that, uh, that I am friends with uh, letting themselves go com get, get completely consumed by, uh, by, by this fucking distraction, which maybe in Canada, you know, outside of Canada, nobody, you know, and uh, what it is, is, uh, well, I, I just had this rant uh, on Saturday, it is right directly out of the, uh, you, you know, the whatever you want to call the Nefarious Days playbook. To divide and conquer us so the 10 richest people on the planet can continue to put $15,000 every second which they have done since day one of this pandemic. Uh, day one of this pandemic. $15,000 in the 10 richest peoples while, while we're sitting around here fighting uh, 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 over uh, some goddamn uh, protest. But anyway, uh, I will... Uh, don't have a whole lot to say about... Uh, my buddy Veg's uh, latest video, I guess, for uh, the the simple reason I am, I don't know whether I'm embarrassed or proud to say this is the first time, this is the only video of Vegematics I have never watched, titled "Canadians Have Had Enough!" Exclamation point. So, uh, so what I, you know, it, it really is breaking my heart to see this man uh, who, who is aware uh, of, the, of what's going on on this planet to be so fucking consumed by this, uh, this whole thing. And uh, so actually, you, you know, as uh, I... I mean, this probably isn't surprising because it's my channel. I have probably heard directly from about 12 Canadians, I'm guessing. You know, Deb Ozarko and, uh, and, and Veg, of course, and every other Canadian that I have personally heard from uh, has been, you know, in favor, have been supporting the truckers but of course, that is probably not unusual because I am supporting the truckers. But anyway, uh, 
first I need to do a little amplification and clarification. So what I did was I just went halfway through the video uh, and, and, what, and, and listened for 30 seconds to Vegematics, the last rant, and he wasn't talking a goddamn thing uh, about the truckers. And what he was doing was parroting verbatim the very rant I had two weeks ago tonight. The, the original rant I was going to do, and you can find it on here, was this story about this Canadian journalist who, who came down here to vacation in Florida and wrote about it uh, up there. And uh, that was the rant that I had planned before that Vegematic performance RP. So I put on the rant. Obviously, Vegematic never listened to the rant because he has no fucking interest in listening to it. So he gets on there and, and, is, and is talking about verbatim the very thing that I was talking about two weeks ago. Uh, in, uh, in, so, I mean, you can go find the rant about this Canadian journalist. But the, 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 the bottom line about these statistics, you know, what he was talking about as I spent 15 fucking minutes dissecting was that uh, the, you, you know, that more than twice as many people in Florida have died of corona panic uh, than in Canada. Anyway, so I went over to, uh, to percentage calculator like I always do and I crunch the numbers for, uh, I, I crunch the numbers for Florida and Canada and I found out, according to my number crunching, that three that that Florida has three times the death rate of Canada. Okay, you know, like like based on a population of a hundred thousand or whatever. That so what it means is <clears throat> there's two ways of saying this. You can say the death rate in Florida, you know, which has the most open, uh, the freest, most open state. Uh, has a, a death rate three times that of Canada. Okay, another way of saying this, when you crunch the numbers, is that 99.7% of Floridians have not died of corona panic. 99.7 have not died, but 99.9% .9 of Canadians have not died. Are you following me? 0.3% of a population is three times the rate of 0.1%. These are two ways of saying the same thing. As far as I know, Vegematic has never gone over on percentage calculator. And then I actually, just last night, ran the numbers on Quebec because, you know, people were commenting to me that you really, to get a, to, to get a better uh, statistic, is you have to look at Quebec which has the most stringent, you know, uh, Nazi lockdowns, all of this crap, anywhere, okay, in Canada. The strongest, uh, whatever you call those states or whatever they're in Canada, Quebec is the single hardest core, while Florida is the most open of the 50. <clears throat> and guess what? Quebec has half again, instead of a 0 0.1 uh, rate, it has a 0 0.16 rate. So if you compare Quebec to Florida, uh, you see what I'm saying, the, the difference between, uh, you know, 90, so in Florida, you know, it's 99.7 and in Quebec, it's 99 point, what is that, 8.4. 99.7% of Floridians have not died of corona panic. 99.84% of uh, people in Quebec have not died of or with 
corona panic. And as I was mentioning, I'm fully suspecting there's a hell of a lot more fat people uh, in Florida, that the obesity rate is much higher here, and there's a hell of a lot more people 65 or older. There are a hell of a lot more people per 100,000 in Florida that are old fat people than in Canada or Quebec, which would even shrink it farther, but I've already had that rant. But anyway, just in case you missed it, that was that part of that rant. But uh, anyway, so I, you know, I commented to Veg, uh, you know, I sent him the link to that and said, uh, here's the link with me discussing what you're talking about here. I would love to hear your comments. And his, his reply back to me, Hambone, I'm fed up with this shit. And then, uh, and, and, and then uh, he goes on to say and never mentions my response that 99.7% of Floridians have not died of uh, corona panic compared to 99. He, he, he nowhere addresses what he was fucking talking about. He has no fucking interest in this is the reason he didn't respond to it. He doesn't care, okay? He does not care. And then uh, he ends up, how many times can I repeat that what is happening here has nothing to do with vaccines or mandates? And on one level, I'm going to agree with Vegematic that, uh, that, that it, uh, has nothing to do with, with it. It's, it's a hell of a lot bigger than, uh, than vaccine mandates. But I really enjoyed, I, I'm going to do a mashup of two comments from this fellow that I don't think he's ever left a comment. This fellow from Montreal, Sebastian Hutton. Uh, this is, I'm just going to read this comment and then we're going to move on uh, to the second part of this rant. We're going to leave the uh, talk about Canada and then we're going to talk about what's really important and what is really going on here because uh, Vegematic is totally correct. This has like nothing to do with vaccine mandates. But anyway, Sebastian, I am in Montreal Quebec has the highest number of deaths of all in Can of all of Canada while having the most severe restrictions by far by far nowhere else in Canada has there been curfews for months to this day all restaurants gyms theaters basically all public places are closed and those who have not been jabbed cannot enter stores over a certain square footage, blah, 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 12 thumbs up uh, to, to that comment. You, you know, so everything that is true for Quebec is not true in the Oasis of Freedom. To this day in Florida, all restaurants, gyms, theaters, basically all public places are open and those who have not been jam, jabbed can enter stores, whatever. And the difference from Quebec and, and, uh, and Florida uh, is 99.7 versus 99.84%. We're talking uh, a difference of 0.14%, not factoring in age and obesity. And then uh, Sebastian uh, continues in another, ta talking directly. Uh, this is this fellow from Montreal talking directly about the uh, trucker's convoy. And, uh, all right. Most, meaning Canadians, most, I'm assuming he's talking about Canadians, 
joined in and supported the trucker convoy because it was the first time in two years a clear voice was elevated to say enough is enough with this bullshit. Many saw ourselves represented in this act of standing up to the rise of a totalitarian government. It was not long before the organizers realized this and widened their objective to include mandates and restrictions for all Canadians. Any mass movement who is joined by hundreds of thousands of people stretching from coast to coast is bound to be joined by a few lunatics to single out these people as representing the entirety of supporters is disingenuous at the very least. 16 thumbs up, 17 thumbs up, counting this thumb. That is exactly, uh, I have never argued with, uh, with Veg, claiming that some of these uh, you know people in the in, in this thing are, are a bunch of fucking nutcases uh, the people I know personally are uh, are absolutely well-intentioned you know what I'm saying uh, so anyway I'm gonna shut this computer down because uh, what I really want to talk about more uh, all of that is just a springboard into the, uh, the larger picture. So, <coughs> any of you who also listen in over at Collapse Chronicles know that I have uh, been reading one of the greatest books I have ever read. Uh, the book The Every by Dave Eggers. And... Uh, it, 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 anyway, this book, uh, The Every by Dave Eggers, I, I certainly encourage Vegematic uh, or, and definitely Keith Hayes to read this book. You clueless fucking little moron, Keith Hayes. Uh, it, it, anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to get on a rant about uh, that pathetic little ass wipe, Keith Hayes. Uh, but anyway... Uh, I've been reading this book, The Every, and I, I, I put this book right up there, uh, you know, with Brave New World. Uh, this, uh, I mean, Dave Eggers is right up there with, uh, with Orwell calling out what is unfolding on this planet. Now, he wrote this book. This book came out... I think it came out in November of 2021. So Dave Eggers uh, was, was, was obviously influenced, among other things, by the corona panic. He, he wrote this novel uh, as the corona panic was the number one story on the planet. And while it's... It's just sitting in the background of this book. It, it, it clearly uh, influenced this book. And so what this book, it is absolutely hilarious. This is one of the funniest uh, fucking books you will ever read. It, it is both funny and absolutely terrifying. And what it's uh, essentially the shtick is... This is way oversimplification. It extrapolates what is unfolding on this planet, particularly in the surveillance state, and, and, and it just looks at what Google is likely to become uh, over the, the you know over the next twenty or thirty years, uh, and uh, and and one of the major themes. I mean, there, there, there's a whole lot of themes here. I, I mean, to try to put this book, but what's germane to this conversation is uh, is uh, what it's 
talking about is, you know, that often quoted what, what Vegematic would call the freedom people. You know, those lunatics, the freedom people, those lunatics, uh, right-wing conspirators who do not think uh, the government should be able to declare a 24-year-old law overriding civil rights. That, that, that is called fascism. Vegematic needs to understand the definition of fascism. We, Canada right now, tonight, is under a fascist dictatorship. But anyway, I'm um, getting back off on uh, that little maggot, uh, Justin Trudeau, and anybody who supports him. But you've heard that, that quote that, you know, all of these lunatic freedom people such as myself and uh, I'm sure Dev Ozarko and Mark J and Alistair and, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, m most of the, the people who I run around with and respect. You know, Benjamin Franklin, what is the quote? That this is a paraphrase. You know, anybody who uh, trades freedom for security deserves neither. That uh, when the, 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 you know the trading your your freedom and your civil rights to make yourself a little bit safer in this case a you know to make yourself safer uh, supposedly uh, from a virus that has killed 0.1% uh, of Canadians or 0.3% of Floridians. How much uh, of, of your freedoms are you going to trade away to, uh, to increase your chance of not being killed by a virus that has not killed 99.9% of, in this case, your fellow Canadians. Okay, so anybody who makes the choice to, uh, to trade their freedoms for this extra little measure of security deserves neither security nor freedom. This is what it's about. It is not about vaccine mandates. It is about that point that, that Benjamin Franklin was making back uh, 250 years ago, that supposedly this country, at least, I don't know about Canada, uh, you know, one of the great minds of the founding fathers uh, understood over 250 years ago that, uh, you know, these trade-offs, this is a slippery slope. And uh, in my own life, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned, you know, for my birthday party uh, in Ithaca, New York, this, uh, I was not allowed to go to my own birthday party because I could not show a vaccine passport uh, in Ithaca, New York, so I was not allowed to go here, uh, the the singer Chris Smither for my own birthday party and uh, they when Ithaca New York brought in this vaccine passport mandate uh, for live music uh, on September 2nd is when they uh, brought it in the last time a person had died uh, of or with uh, corona panic uh, in the city of Ithaca, New York, was March. Not one person had died in six months in the city of, uh, but to protect people, this was before Omicron, uh, even if, 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 if someone had told me two years ago, two years ago, in, uh, in February of 2020, had it, it, if one of my uh, right-wing, Donald Trump voting, anti-science, conspiracy wacko friends had told me, Hambone, 
in, in September of next year, okay, in September of 2021, you will have to show a vac, a, 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 you will have to show your papers to show you have been vaccinated against a, 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 a virus that has killed zero point one percent, and and that has not killed one person in, in the last six months. To go here, to go to your own birthday party, and and little left leaning civil rights cheering uh, Ithaca, New York. I would have said I would have sounded like Vegematic. You are a fucking right wing nut job. You are one of those freedom people. You are one of those lunatic freedom people acting like uh, that in a year and a half. You're going to have to pull out a fucking vaccine passport. Uh, I, this is what I would have said. And, 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 and this is exactly what this book is picking up on. And, uh, and as it... Um, I have two chapters left. I already know how how it ends. Uh, it's, it's obvious how it how the book is is going to end. But uh, you know, it's talking about this slippery slope that if we do not nip this shit in the bud, what sounds like. Uh, and to, to a lot of people, that, that is a few fucking crazy whack jobs out there uh, ringing their bell, talking about the fucking sky is falling. Uh, you, you know, uh, this is exactly what the, the uh, nefarious they uh, from Google, uh, you know, the whole fucking bit. You know exactly what we're talking about. It is a slippery slope that needs to get nipped in the fucking bud. Now we have, uh, you, you know, September, Hambone can't go listen, can't go to his own fucking birthday party because he cannot show a vaccine passport. And here we are, six months later, the, uh, the whatever this little fucker is up there in Canada, this Nazi little fucker, uh, going up there, uh, pulling out the National Emergencies Act, uh, just completely over, just declaring himself dictator of Canada six months later. You don't have to get that far-fetched. And the, and the other thing I want to touch on here, which is more personal, uh, you know, the other theme in here is talking about one of the biggest tragedies of all of this shit, okay, the, the, and, and uh, uh, these vaccine mandates are a tiny little drop in the bucket, I agree with, Veg, with Vegematic on this, but what they're, you know, what it's, talking about here is how these things, the more and more that these things are rolled out and cheered on by the corporate mainstream media and all of this, that more and more friendships are going to be destroyed over this divide and conquer uh, as more and more people get more and more freaked out about how they can increase their level of safety, that, that how they're willingly going to hand over their civil rights and their freedoms, uh, and, 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 uh, and how friendships like... I have not, my brother lives three hours from here. I was, I was uh, two blocks from my brother's house in Fort Myers. Uh, I have not seen my brother, my own brother, in two years because he is, he's claiming it's his wife, uh, is so fucking terrified that I am going to come down there and kill them. That I, my, my, my brother, Literally, my relationship with my own brother has been destroyed by this. Uh, obviously, uh, my relationship uh, with uh, that fucking little maggot, uh, Keith, 
um, uh, has been destroyed over this. I just, uh, I, I had another friendship, as I mentioned on Saturday, with my buddy Shane, Night Skylight has been destroyed over this. Uh, I don't know if my several year friendship with River Hermit, my friend Joanna, has been destroyed over this or not. My guess is that it has been. That I, that I, have, I am watching friendships be destroyed. I do not know at this point whether my friendship with Vegematic is going to survive this or not. And that breaks my fucking heart. This is not performance art. It breaks my fucking heart. I'm thinking that Vegematic and I are both big enough, okay, to uh, not let this destroy our friendship. You know, his derangement syndrome over this. You know, Sandy Shellis basically is on uh, Vegematic's side. But Sandy, but she's not fucking deranged by it. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it, it breaks my heart, and that is a, uh, a, a common thing. But I am going to close this rant of my battery with just a small reading. And what this is, is an essay that was written... Uh, by one of these old, doddering old farts, one of these old school lefties, okay? When all of this is unfolding, she's pretty much this old bag, uh, old and in the way, old bag that no one wants to listen to. This is an essay that is that she uh, wrote towards the end of her life as all of this was unfolding. And if my battery will, uh, will uh, bear with me here. Okay, this is kind of a mashup. <clears throat> each year, we spend more time examining each other, judging each other, mentally murdering each other. And we wonder why the pills continue to get stronger. We are numb and want to be number. We are a species in contraction. The age of exploration has given way to the age of introspection, of fear, of caution. We seek nothing. We invent nothing. We forgive nothing. A species that sits still in a circle staring at each other cannot survive. We sit in constant judgment of each other and thus we are a species in decline. Nothing great can be created in such a climate. An authentic human life cannot be lived this way. We become more tame and fearful every year, every day, and every hour brings another thing we cannot do or cannot say, and in all cases, the penalty for violators is that they are thrown away a kind of digital capital punishment. Every new generation re purports to be more empathetic, and yet every new generation is less forgiving. And, of course, with every coming year, technology ensures that no errors go unrecorded. The question now, the question now is whether we have become a different species. Never before has humankind evolved so quickly and so uniformly. Globalism has enabled the every 
meaning Google on steroids, to touch nearly every human on the planet at the same time. Never has it been possible to introduce a movement or goal, vaccinate the planet, or product, and have it reach every person the same day. And in my research, we have never been a more pliable species. The ready adoption of virtually any new application has almost no historical precedent. This leaves a very small group of non-adopters who struggle to participate in society in analog ways. But with every passing year, the ability of these resistors to function in society becomes more challenging, if not impossible. Children need the latest hardware and constant connection in order to get an education. Seniors depend on algorithms to receive pills. Cash and paper will soon be outlawed and every transaction and communication will be digital and thus public and tracked and open to interpretation, speculation, and judgment. Though they try, trogs, troglodytes, in the end are no more politically powerful or culturally influential than the Amish. I want to have hope. Monopolies have been broken in the past. Tyrannies have fallen. Usually this, these entities go too far and always there is someone who sees this and has the power to not just ring the bell but actually stop a flood of lemmings from following each other over the cliff and into the sea. I have spent decades now trying to think of just how this message could be conveyed, how I could convince these species to turn back, but I have failed. I have stood at Cliff's Edge for generations now and watched thousands leap. Whether they heard me or not, I don't know, but in any case, they sailed over the edge. And this is the fucking heartbreak of this. That we are just going to have to learn to live with this. The, those of us, the, the, uh, us lunatic, we lunatic freedom people who have a problem with the Prime Minister of Canada uh, declaring basically martial law. Uh, in, in, in essence, doesn't that sound like a right-wing conspiracy wacko, a freedom person quote to you, Vegematic? Those of us uh, seeing the handwriting on the wall of how fucked we are are going to have to uh, live with the fact that our friends, our family members, our parents, our children are going to join the herd of lemmings and whether uh, we're going to be able to still have uh, be friends with them or uh, pretty much what I, th well, I'm not gonna put words in Debo Zarco's mouth. She can speak for herself. Uh, anyway, I have a hell of a lot fewer friends than I had two years ago. This thing, that this, because I think uh, Corona Panic is a bad hair day, which is all I have ever said since day one, that this is a bad hair day. I consider in two years, 99.7% uh, of people not dying of Corona Panic. It barely, it barely measures as a bad hair day. Uh, but because I think that, 
Uh, I am, uh, you, you know, I have been uh, defriended, uh, unsubbed, uh, ridiculed, what did she say, thrown away uh, by the herd of lemmings. I am not a fucking lemming. I am a human being with a fucking brain who does not think that it is a good idea to sit back and, 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 and let a, a fucking elected official basically declare martial law over a democracy. I think uh, this is a lot bigger than, this, than, than not being able to go see uh, someone I want to see with my friends on my own fucking birthday in, in a fucking town where not one person has died in six months of or with uh, this virus. It is a slippery fucking slope, and I am ringing the fucking bell. Demo Zarco is ringing the fucking bell. Mark J is ringing the bell. Alistair is ringing the bell. Osama is ringing the bell. Kevin Shanholzer is ringing the bell. If any of if anybody wants to listen, they can. But I am one of those lunatic freedom people, and I am goddamn proud of it. I am unapologetic, and uh, there you go. And I am a doomer, and I realize the entire subject has nothing to do with how fucked this planet is. It simply has to do with how fucked humans are. And one more fucking reason we need to go. And with that, it is Valentine's Day. So uh, I'm going to go over to Pile of Fish and find my new Doomer Chick forever on Valentine's Day. Wish me luck. Love you guys. On Valentine's Day. Yes, little Valentine. Bye, guys. This fucking thing. Looks like the battery's still on. I did my whole motherfucking uh, Collapse Chronicles rant today. Put it on the computer. No sign of it. I get to do it all over again.